Okay. After some technical difficulties, which I apologize for being late, um, I think we are up and running. We are not on our original link, so I did try to send out a message to everyone that had signed up to let them know that link um, for the live event has changed. So again, apologize, you know, for any confusion. Um, it was working when we set up and then <laughs> we went to go live, it stopped. So um, I'm gonna jump right in and get started. But I did wanna apologize and give you a brief explanation as to what was going on. So we may or may not have a lot of live questions at the end um, because I'm not sure that everyone uh, will receive the message that uh, we had to switch links for the actual event. So um, I'll give an option to, of course, um, you know, submit questions that I can answer, you know, directly to the person who, who uh, posed the question or, um, you know, I can figure out a way to, to disseminate that information to you guys. But uh, seven ways to push content out into the bridal universe, attract more brides and book more weddings. So it's probably one of the most common questions that wedding planners ask me. Um, most of you do know that you need content or copy in some way, shape, or form um, in order to market your business. But sometimes you really just wind up scratching your head, you know, with no idea what to do with this big pile of content, you know, once you have, have it in your hot little hands. You know, well, the mystery is going to end today. Um, we are going to go through the seven different ways. Um, it's not the only ways, but there are seven major ways that you can push your content out into the bridal universe. Of course, in in return, you want to attract more brides, and in the end, you want to book more weddings. So today, I'm going to reveal some of those major ways. Um, and by these are some of the same exact steps that I take to distribute my own content to wedding industry pros, just like you, and they work like gangbusters. Um, but you can just as easily apply them to attracting dream brides. Um, and on a quick side note, you know, again, I will leave some time at the end for questions. If there's not any live questions because of, of the technical problem, um, then I will uh, give you an option to submit them to me directly. Uh, if there are questions live, please do hold them until the end. And if you have one, just write a little note down to yourself so that you won't forget it, and I, I will answer it. Um, oh yeah, let me give you some down and dirty info on me so you have some idea of why you might listen to what I have to say to begin with. So I'm Christy Lorette McCauley. I have a word addiction, and I'm not afraid to use it or admit it. And in my past life, I was a certified wedding planner. But in my current life, I am the wedding planner copywriter. So I'm a published author, copy expert, marketing maven, communication chica. I'm a wife, a mom, and so much more. Um, I do wear a ton of hats. And I know that you do too. And I know that because as a former certified wedding player, I walked a mile in your shoes, uh, your pumps, your stilettos, you know, your stylish flats. I've been writing for a long time, probably started about two, but it I didn't make much sense until um, much later in my life. Um, in the real world, I do have over 18 years of experience in writing and marketing. Wow, I still think, how is that possible? You know, I still feel like I'm so young. Um, but anyway, I use this experience in my writing um, and from running my own event planning business in the past to turn your thoughts into words that land you dream brides and book your calendar solid. So here are some of my street creds. Um, as I mentioned, I am a former certified wedding planner. I did own and operate my wedding planning business for about four years. I was the president, at one time I was president, vice president, secretary on the board of the NAWP for the Miami Bade and Broward chapter, which um, is the National Association of Wedding Professionals, in case you're not familiar with it. I've been writing copy and content 
specifically for the wedding industry for over eight years. And one of my gigs is I am the wedding expert on the Love to Know blog, which is called Here Comes the Wedding. I've published literally thousands of wedding articles, and I've authored um, some wedding books such as Your Second Wedding. Okay, so let's do this. The problem. The problem is um, you have a big pile of content and now you don't know how to get it in front of your dream brides. So you've bought into the whole content marketing thing. Um, you have this big pile of content. You either wrote it or you bought it, doesn't matter. Um, you know, we're talking articles, blog posts, videos, infographics, and the list really just goes on and on. So back to the pile of content. You have it and you have no idea what to do with it all. And you can go and you can post it on your blog. That's pretty boring. Um, you really have to, to get it out there elsewhere to attract them to your blog. So the solution is that what you really have to do is uh, find a, a way to spread that content out into the bridal universe to reach brides. Um, you have to make those dry, brides drool over what you have to say and you have to figure out how to make them then from that content rush to the site to find out more information. Um, basically, your your solution is how to turn that content, you know, into bookends at the end of the day. So let's go ahead, jump right in to the first way. So the first way uh, you can get this out, this content out is to create an email campaign. This is the very first thing I do with my new content. So after I do post it to my blog, I, I go and I turn it into an email campaign to my wedding planners list. So the, the content that I write is specifically written for wedding planners, and I have a list that is for wedding planners. I write the content, I run to my, uh, I use MailChimp, I run to MailChimp and I create an email campaign. And I don't always email it out right away. So instead what I do is I schedule it, that content to go out as what's called an autoresponder. So um, here's a big hint. Um, what, what this does and what it can do for you is it allows me to have my e-newsletters done and my email campaign scheduled well into the future. So I'm not really creating these things by the seat of my pants. My entire follow-up system is, is just that. It's a system that's totally on autopilot. So no matter when a wedding planner ups into my list, there's a sequence of content that goes out to you guys, you know, that's based on when you opt in. So I don't, I'm, you know, not manually doing anything as far as you know, that content is concerned. Now, what email campaigns do is they get your content in front of the brides that you know wanna hear what you have to say, and it's all because they have subscribed to your list. Um, you know, they have said they wanna hear from you. So, you know, you know this already, it's a great audience to be hitting up with this content. Um, what you wanna do also is include share options in your emails, um, like forward to a friend and different social media icons for your different accounts. You want to make it easy for them to share the content with their families, with their groom, you know, with their bridal party, and even other brides they know that are getting married so that you, you can even grow your list. If you uh, want to check out my resources page on my website, um, there's some tools there that kind of give you an indication, you know, what that I use uh, to create the content, um, you know, if you need any help in that department, like for example, um, um, creating an e-news or creating an autoresponder is probably one of the most basic and obvious distribution channels for getting your content out there. I um, mean, it might be something that you're doing already and, and if if that's the case, then great, you know, keep it up. But if you're not, mark it down on your list as something that you really should be doing. And you can play around with and test the way that you actually share your articles. Um, sometimes I prefer 
to post the entire article inside the email so that wedding planners can just read, you know, the entire thing from soup to nuts, you know, right there in front of them. Other times I might tease a little bit and give like a beginning of the article and then provide a link for them, you know, to go on and lap up juicy details, you know, by going to my blog, you know, where the actual entire article is posted. The latter way is a really great way to monitor your click-through rates to see how many people are clicking on the links in your email, which is, you know, an indicator that they're actually reading the email when they open it and then hopefully, you know, reading the content once they get over to your blog. So number one, create an email campaign. Two, you're targeted. You're not sending this out to everyone in the free world. You're sending out content to the appropriate list, you know, the, the list that this content is meant for. Okay, number two, Reddit. Um, this is hands down my biggest source of traffic for my content. So from one blog post that I wrote and then shared on Reddit, uh, it was called 10 words to cut from your writing. I say it's poppycock. Just from Reddit alone, it generated 143 visits to that one blog post in one day. So just from Reddit alone, it doesn't count any other traffic from any other sources. Um, it's totally free to set up a Reddit account. You make it really easy to share by adding a little Reddit button to your blog post. Pages. So once you do all of that, this is what I do, and this is what you can do too. Or if you have an assistant, um, this is something that they can handle for you. Um, after I post to my blog, I click on the Reddit button on my post. And then it allows me to add it to my Reddit account to go ahead and share with the universe. And it's so simple that I'm convinced, you know, my 19-month-old can do it. <laughs> um, the other great thing about adding a Reddit button to your posts, and this is just like you would add a Facebook or a Twitter or Google Plus button, is that others can share the content too. So they end up pushing your content out into their universe you know, for you, on your behalf. Um, Reddit does have a wedding subreddit, and subreddits is just what Reddit calls its content categories. Um, and this is probably the best category for you to submit content to, uh, to, you know, to get in front of brides, obviously. Okay, so you got uh, create an email campaign and you've got, you know, pushing your content out there. Number three, Snickly. Um, <laughs> this is, this one is a little different. This is one I call piggybacking. So Snickly is another kind of content distribution option. And what it allows you to do is piggyback on the content that big businesses or big websites or companies or publications are already just, I mean, big in the wedding industry, you know, you might think the not, you might brides, um, dot com, you know, the wedding channel. You, you, you can literally piggyback on the information that these humongous, you know, sites are sharing already. So I'll give you an example. I was able to piggyback on an entrepreneur article, top of it, uh, to one of my blog posts that brought the most comments to date to my blog posts. Um, so while Reddit brought me the most traffic for one particular blog post, Snippy landed me the highest number of contents, I mean comments on that particular post. Um, in a nutshell, here's how it works. So what you do is you head on over to your fave search engine, and if you prefer, you know, you can accomplish the same goal by just heading over to your favorite wedding site that provides articles and blog posts for brides. Um, so either way, you can search, you know, on, on like a Google, or you can search on, you know, one of your favorite sites. Then you conduct a search on the topic of your article, so something related to your article. Um, you know, if you're talking about wedding dress trends or something like that, then, you know, that's a topic that maybe you would search. Um, you want to find an article that is somehow related to your article, but of course doesn't share the same exact information. 
Um, so maybe yours is talking about you know, the big colors that are in trend for, for wedding dresses. And then this article talks about more about you know cuts like style um, versus uh, color. So they complement one another, but it's not the same exact information. So then you copy the link to the article that you choose. And here's a big hint. If it's at the top of Google, for example, then it's probably there because it has a lot of views and shares and comments. It's popular. Um, and if you want to copy, you can do uh, heading over to BuzzSumo. And that's, a, that's another big hint. Um, BuzzSumo, which is B-U-Z-Z-S-U-M-O. Um, uh, you can actually find an article to piggyback right on BuzzSumo if you prefer. Um, so what BuzzSumo does is if you put in direct article link or you search by keyword or phrase or whatever topic, um, it pulls up a list of articles or it gives you, um, and then it by the article, it gives you social media information. So it gives you the number of shares, the number of, you know, shares basically for each uh, social network. So you'll see Facebook, you'll see LinkedIn, you'll see Twitter, you'll see Google Plus. So obviously the more shares it has on those different networks, you know, the more popular it is. And that's a good article, you know, to piggyback off of. So you have your article link of the article that you found that's related to a topic of your own blog post. Go back to your Snipply account with that link to the article that you've chosen. And once you're there in Snipply, paste the link into the article that you found. And then you click this little snip button. Very simple. So there's just a box where you, you paste the URL and there's a snip button. Once you do that, this little pop-up box comes up. And it basically asks you to fill in some information. It does fill in some of the information for you. So what you'll fill in is um, information about your article. So just you know, go through the, the Dropbox and fill it out. So here's, once you do that, it'll give you um, this information. This is where the magic really happens. It gives you a link. And it's a short link, so it's perfect for social media sharing. You're going to choose the social media sites where you want to spread the word about this article that you read. And then you use that little mini link to share it. So I might have found one. The entrepreneur article I found was, you know, basically 10 words to cut from your writing. And then I kind of received what they were saying by, you know, writing my blog post. So I said, oh, look at this, you know, article that entrepreneur shared on 10 words that you should cut from your writing. And then you give your little snippy, I gave my little snippy uh, URL. And then what happens is when people click on the link for the article, which in my case was the entrepreneur article, this little bar pops up across the bottom of their screen that has your article in it. <laughs> so here, you're sharing the article blog post that you found, not the one you wrote, but indirectly, you're sharing your article or blog post at the same time. So a couple of different things can happen. They see, you know, the article that you're sharing as the main part of their screen, and they see your little, you know, article at the bottom as a bar. They could read through the article that you shared, and then when they get to the bottom, they see your article, and then they read it because it covers some related topic to the article that they just read. The second thing is they might see your article, skip the, the main article altogether, and go straight for your article. Maybe it's a different angle of a you know the topic they're more interested in. Um, they might skip your article. They may skip both articles. <laughs> Those are basically your four options. But the first two are the most likely, and of course desired you know outcomes. Um, because basically, if they were interested enough in the topic that of the article that you were sharing to begin with, you know, to click on that, then they're probably click on yours, you know, when they get to the bottom of it. So really great way 
to be an information source for your prospects and your clients, but indirectly promote your own content at the same time. That's exactly what Sniffly is. So you have email campaigns, you have Reddit, you have Sniffly, and now we're going to talk about YouTube. Now is also good to remind you that on content is not just blog posts or articles. So it's not just copy or text. It's also videos, pictures, photos, graphs, infographics, charts. It's anything that shares 411 online with brides. So now that that's out of the way, let's you know move on to YouTube. And I feel the cringing going on as I mentioned recording a video or whenever I say, you know, record a video to someone, I can see it in their face or hear it in their voice. And that's okay. I get it. Um, trust me, I'm not a huge fan of being the star of my own videos either. <laughs> and you don't have to be. Um, similar to how I'm screen sharing with you guys today, you know, you can create your own videos in a very similar fashion. Um, you could do a really quick intro where you're either on screen or not. Um, or you can basically just stick to a voiceover the entire way through. It's totally up to you. If you feel comfortable, you know, getting in front of the camera and talking for, an, you know, an hour or 10 minutes or four minutes or whatever, great. Do it. Uh, you know, there are ways around it that are just as professional and just as, you know, just as effective in getting the information out there. Uh, the more important thing is that you share words, uh, information that really packs a punch. You've got to give them relevant and useful information that brides really drool over, uh, so much so that it makes them want to know more about you, it makes them crave you, and it makes them want to hire you right now. That's the end goal of the video, um, is the content. So open up a YouTube account if you don't have one, you can, if you want, even create your own channel so that all of your videos, you know, get uploaded there. So if they see one video they like on your channel, you know, they can go and click, you know, easily click on your other videos. Um, I'm going to add some keywords that pertain to the topic of the video so that when people search for it, they'll find it. And here's the real key. Mention your name and your website or put it somewhere on the video slides. So brides know how to find you once the video credits roll. Uh, another video site to, that you can look into if you're not interested in YouTube or in addition to YouTube is, um, which is like growing by leaps and bounds, it's called Vimeo. That's another option. And um, if you're not convinced that YouTube's the way for the, the university to write, you have to say, or videos in general are not uh, the way to go, I'm going to share some stats. For, yeah, for YouTube, this is for YouTube uh, with you. So more than 1 billion, yes, it's, I said billion with a B, uh, unique visitors or users visit YouTube every single month. Over 6 billion, it's the B word again, um, hours of video are watched each month on YouTube. So that's almost an hour for every single person on the face of this earth. 100 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every single minute. That's a lot of video. According to Nielsen, YouTube ends up reaching more U.S. adults between 18 and 34 than any cable network does. And millions of people subscribe to YouTube every single day. And the number of people subscribing each day is um, up more than three times what it was last year and uh that's huge I and mean, that's a huge 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 and if, if those numbers don't convince you that video it has some power to it you know i'm not really sure what does and you, you can get really creative with wedding stuff um you know depending on exactly what kind of wedding pro you are uh it, it can get really creative on the videos that you share that content that you share so you know consider it Consider it a huge way to push your content out. And by the way, um, really quick side note before I move on to the fifth option, you can easily turn a textual blog post into a video. Uh, so think about that too. You don't have to recreate content over and over and over again. 
uh, turn existing content into a different form of content. So you're not really uh, you know, recreating a wheel, basically, or spending a lot of time creating new content. There's, you know, basically a half a dozen ways you can turn one piece of content into, you know, seven, eight, ten other pieces of content without ever really changing anything. So keep that in mind. Okay. Number five. Stumble upon. So stumble upon is a site where brides can find your website and your business. And by that I really mean find your services <laughs> by finding your content. So you can share your individual blog posts on Stumble Upon. And then what Stumble Upon does is they turn around and they suggest your content to its members that have an interest in the subject of your content. Again, this would probably as a general category be weddings. But there might be some subcategories even involved there. Um, it's another free site to join. And similar to how you add content to Reddit, using a little Reddit button from your site, you can do the same exact thing with StumbleUpon. So similar to how visitors can use the Reddit button on your post to share your content on their Reddit accounts, they can also do the same thing with a StumbleUpon button on your blog post. So very simple, uh, similar to Reddit, but a different site uh, does seem to reach a different audience uh, as far as broadening your reach, but still reaches you know the brides and bridal party, you know family members, grooms, you know things of that nature. So number six is. Pinterest and Pinterest is a biggie. Um, if you're not familiar with Pinterest for some reason, all it really is is an electronic bulletin board where you can pin the ideas that you come across uh, as you access them, and then you can return to them later. Uh, and brides, you know, blow Pinterest up because there's all sorts of ideas on there. So they're, they're using Pinterest like crazy to get ideas for their wedding, plan their wedding, uh, you know, put together an information to meet their vendors and, and then, you know, have these vendors implement exactly, you know, what they're finding on Pinterest. And I'll give you a really super quick example that is event related. Um, for my daughter's first birthday, I poured over hundreds if not thousands of party themes and ideas on Pinterest and I basically ended up planning her entire party from Pinterest pens. <laughs> but more importantly for you, for someone who's you know a wedding vendor like giving misses and in products, selling products, you know, I bought a lot of the stuff that I needed for the party because I found it through Pinterest. Um, so whether your business is product or service based, this Pinterest can really work for you. And here's how it might go down. So I'm searching for ladybug party themes, which is ultimately what I ended up choosing. And I see a pin for a guy that has hundreds of ladybug party theme ideas. And I click on that picture that you know some business has pinned. Um, and then I click on the guy picture, and then it opens up, and I can read it. Or I click on the little website below that picture where it tells me, you know, this is where the picture originally came from. And voila, you know, I'm reading this guide that some party, you know, planner wrote on hundreds of different, you know, ladybug party theme ideas. So then what happens is your guide, let's say it's your guide, um, the picture from Pinterest is really on your website. It's not, it's on Pinterest to draw them to your website. That's the ultimate goal here. So then when I get your website, Right, because I'm reading this guy, I realize you sell some of all this fabulous ladybug party stuff. Um, you're featuring in your oh guy, so um, I buy you know these said products you know, on a sale. You made a sale, and it's all because I came across a picture on Pinterest that led me to a guide that led me to the products in the guide that you're selling. You know that I want to buy anyway. So I should mention here again that Pinterest can work for services. So don't get afraid if you don't sell products. Um, say you offer a guide on the top 100 ways to throw a big wedding on a small butt. 
and you're a wedding planner. You know, you're setting yourself up to plan some business. Uh, if you're a DJ and you offer a guide on the top 10 ways to put together your reception song list, um, again, in front of guys that are likely to book your services. And now it goes a lot deeper than this because people can turn around and pin your pins, which again is how the word spreads and how sales numbers, you know, get a boost. Now, from a business owner's perspective, this is really for your content. You know, first you have to open up a Pinterest account, of course, and you can use a personal account. Um, on Pinterest, or you can open up an account for your business. That's totally up to you. Um, one thing you want to do is you want categories for your pins. So when you post a picture on your blog post, which by the way, every blog post should have a picture, you can then pin that picture from your Pinterest account into the appropriate category. Now, when you do pin a picture, this comes up. And it's a description box. So basically, you want to fill in a quick description. And it might be the tone of your blog post. I mean, you don't have to get super complicated there. And then you might want to add, or you do want to add, a link to the content where it sits on your actual site. So um, if you are a location specific business, which most of you probably are, um, then you want to throw in some keywords here that mention you know, what your coverage area is. Um, if you're selling, you know, nationally or providing service nationally, then that may, may not be an issue for you. So you click the pin it button and you're done. Now that picture, that content, it's searchable, it's pinnable, and it's shareable, uh, which is, you know, hands down what you want content to be. <laughs> um, Another thing you can do with Pinterest is create what's called a teaser, where you choose a photo, and, and you can use a site like PicMonkey or Canva uh, to add some text to the photo. But, um, it's the same steps to get on interest, and it can have the same effect. So it's basically just um, kind of a, you know, lead into content. And it might be, the cover to your guide that you've written, and it would just be the title of, of the actual guide. Um, but it's, it's just enough to like you know entice them uh, to click on the content. And when they click on it, it takes them to a page on your site, which is where you want them to land in the end. So Pinterest, huge, huge, huge Pinterest. <laughs> Huge, huge for weddings. I mean, it's, it's humongous, especially for this particular industry. It's huge in general, but for your industry, it is humongous. I can't stress that enough about getting content on Pinterest. All right, so that's six ways. The seventh way is Instagram. So Instagram is a straight up photo sharing site. You cannot post an update like you can on Facebook to Instagram without including a picture. So you start with a picture. Um, and when you create teaser pics that I was just talking about uh, for a Pinterest, you can share those on Instagram. That's a perfect place to share a teaser pic. You can include a caption of the teaser pic or any kind of pic that you're sharing, even if it's like an event pic or uh, you know, behind the scenes pick for your business. Um, and in the caption for the photo, this is where you can include a link to where you want them to go on your website. The yuck part about Instagram now is those links are not clickable. So, you know, you, you got data in the way that you do uh, share the links. You can share it, of course, they're not going to be able to click it. They could copy and paste it or they could if it's memorable enough, you know, they might go over and, um, you know, just type it into their, their search engine. Uh, but the other thing you can do is you change it inside of your uh, profile so that it's, it's clickable. That's the only link that you can share in your Instagram right now. Please change that. That's clickable. 
So, for example, when I have a webinar going on and I'm promoting the webinar through Instagram, I change my uh, profile link to take directly to either the page for the webinar on the website or the subscription page where they can just sign, you know, directly up for it. Um, you can use shots from your events. You can use professional shots from the photographer. If you are the photographer, even better. Or um, if, if you, can, you can use your own shots. It doesn't have to be professional shots. I mean, they can be pretty, uh, you know, amateurish. It's fine. You can edit them with sites like PicMonkey or Canva. Um, you can even add in titles or words or special effects. You know, if, if you start doing that, that's totally up to you. Again, doesn't, isn't necessary. But Instagram is huge. It's growing. More and more people are joining. And again, it's all visually based. So it's, you know, it's just a way to get your content out there. Even if it's written content, you can turn it into a photo, or, you know, the written content that way. So, all right. That's not every way in the universe that you can uh, get your uh, content out there or share your content. But it's a lot of the effective ways that you can push your content into the universe, you know, attract more rides, and increase the amount of booked weddings that you have. Um, all right. Before I open it up for Q&A, which I'm not expect a lot of live Q&A because of the technical glitch, but um, I did want to share a juicy offer with you really quick. I am offering a complete review $97. So after you, uh, you know, go back to your site and kind of look at your copy and your content and you revise it, you know, based on some of these ways that you can share, you can come, have me come in and take a, a look at your content, um, either copy on your site and help you perfect it, basically. Um, we know, you know, words pack a powerful punch, so you can finally find out from a professional just what the copy on your website is saying. Here's exactly what you get. You get a complete copy review of up to five pages of your website. And then what I do is I create this report. And it basically spelled out for you tweaks or changes and recommendations that I have to copy. And then you can either take those suggestions and run with them. If not, you know, it's totally up to you. Again, it's maybe seven bucks. I'm booking right now, uh, obviously in April. I do have a few slots left. I have about seven slots left for the end of the rest of April. And once those slots fill up, I won't be taking on any more copy reviews until May. So um, you can book your review um, at my website. Um, the address is here, theactionmarketingcopy.com backslash website dash copy dash review. Um, so you can check that out, see if it's something you might be interested in. And if so, uh, you can book it right there on the site. All right, so now for Q&A. Oh, and there is a slight delay I um, the time that you type in a question to uh, me receiving it. So if, if you type something and it seems like it's taking me a while to answer that, that's a lie. <laughs> okay. All right, the first question is, do you ever have problems with Reddit flagging the content as spam and what about stumble upon? Okay, sometimes Reddit have some hang ups like that. It's not tagged content as spam, but if it finds something hinky on the content page, 
like URL you're submitting, for example, it can prevent submitting it. You can try what you can, you can do a couple of different things. You can try another subreddit, so you try a different category. Sometimes we'll take it away, like some category you to do some things that are like, for example, a photo on your blog post, which all yours should. There are some subreddits that allow both. Um, so that won't let you submit it under that subreddit, so you can. It to make it, you know, choose a different stuff to get around it, or you can have revisions to your blog depending on what the error message is that Reddit is giving to, you, and then try to resubmit the link to the to the subreddit. Um, you can also move on at that point, you know, not to try to hit that particular. Uh, it doesn't happen often or all the time, but once in a while, you know, you might run into this problem. There's there's some occasional times of that or did I just said, you know, what, this one isn't worth, uh, you know, spending, and I'll just move on. But I would say, you know, nine out of ten, I haven't had a problem with that. Again, it doesn't mark it as spam. It just gives you a benefit. People were having problem getting the new link. Next question. What about using sex? Um, but I think find others. guide you know in the little off the box the blog post my point is that you really have to rise or reading and that you have uh, and you have to use the post rides to jump on your list you know so that you can continue to communicate with them So I'll hang on for just a few more.
anything else popping up right now so if uh, you do have any other feel free to email me uh, you can send it to Christy k-r-i-s-t-i-e at action marketing copy dot com or <laughs> I will be sending out an email with uh, the video for those of you that were subscribed uh, so that you can at least listen to the recording. You can always hit reply to that email. I read all of them personally, and I will respond to your question. And if it's uh, that great of a question, I will respond and possibly you know, promote it as a blog post or send it out to the email list so that everyone can actually benefit from it. Again, big apologies. I'm not sure what the problem was. The first time I've ever had a problem with a Google Hangout. Um, so I am sorry for the delay and for uh, any problems that you had in getting uh, connected today. Uh, maybe I'll rebroadcast it to um, do another live session just in case um, as well. But thanks a lot for hanging with me, if you did hang with me, <laughs> or for watching the, the recorded version of it if you're watching it uh, after the fact. All right, take care.